for the busy things, traveling and stuff. So thank you very much for everyone for coming. I'm Lewis, I will be moderating today. I'm the current president of Asia Europe, the European Students Forum. And um, okay, today we have this event hosted by Adel, and we have also Giuseppe from the European Youth Forum, and Roald, who will be representing the YVOT project. So very quickly of what AJ is, many of you will be aware already. European Students Forum, created in 1985 as a platform to empower uh, higher education students and allow their voices to reach the policy-making levels. And today we're one of the biggest interdisciplinary student organizations, present in 40 countries. Um, and uh, in the last European Parliament elections, 2009, AJ Europe developed a very big uh, transnational campaign in different countries promoting the youth participation in the European Parliament elections. And for the new edition in 2014, we would like to repeat this successful campaign and count with, this time, a more, uh, more ambitious campaign and counting with other different partners, uh, especially the European Youth Forum in this case and the League of Young Voters. And um, yes, yeah, so we're here to launch officially. So first I would like to give the floor to Ada for hosting this. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, and thank you, Asia Europe, for uh, inviting me again once more, one more time to host an event. But it's a real pleasure for me and for the youth intergroup to participate in this kind of events, and, and especially now that we are facing the last year before the European election. And as you mentioned, I know that this kind of uh, project and this campaign was a real success in 2009, so I'm really happy that you relaunch it again for the next European elections. I think it's really, really important that uh, IJ Europe and other, or other European Youth Forum also try to, to bring together the European institutions and young people. This is not a very easy time, especially because of the crisis, but more and more we can see that the European people and young people uh, feel very, um, I don't know how to explain, feel that the European Union is not their European Union. Maybe it was the European Union of, of our fathers and grandfathers, but not now. So I think it's really important that this kind of events and this kind of campaign can help people to see that the European Union can be different. Maybe they don't like it, what they are uh, seeing now and what are the decisions that we are taking on the European institutions. But also we have to say to European people and young people that they can change what is done, done in this moment in, the, in, the, in Europe and European institutions, especially if they go uh, to the European elections and vote for a different parliament. If they don't like it, they have to participate, they have to vote, and they have to change on the way they think they have to change the European Parliament. So I'm really happy to participate again with the uh, Europe in this kind of campaign. You know them open to help you anyway. And if you need me or, or other members of the, of the youth intergroup to participate in our countries and in other countries, we are really happy to do it. And thank you again to invite me. Thank you very much. We will invite you, don't worry. <laughs> we will carry on, carry on being, know, being behind you, spamming you all the time. Um, yes, one of the very important points which you mentioned were the, was the lack of ownership which young people feel nowadays towards the European Union, or does my vote count for something? What is the point of voting? Um, this year, the European uh, Youth Forum, here represented by Giuseppe, has developed a very, very nice uh, initiative, the League of Young Voters, which IJ Europe will be uh, supporting and taking part on, um, and we, we're very happy because it's a very an ambitious, very big and ambitious plan. So um, I want to give the floor to Giuseppe to explain, maybe talk uh, a bit about the problems which young people face nowadays with uh, all the democratic process and the political process, but also what is what are the aims of the of the League of Young Voters? Yes, thank you very much, uh, Luis. Um, well, first of all, uh, it's uh, quite uh, symbolic that you're launching now the Why Vote campaign uh, um, two <coughs> days or three days after the uh, big launch that we had of the league uh, just a few days ago. Maybe some of you were there. We had uh, uh, the Yo Fest, and during the Yo Fest, we had the launch of the League of the Young Voters. 
specifically marked by the presence of uh, the President of the Commission, Barroso, and, uh, and many other uh, members of the European Parliament, uh, commissioners, and etc. etc. <coughs> These two mark, uh, I will come later about the League specifically, I will go first on, on your first question about uh, what is going on politically in Europe now and the preparations for the European elections. <coughs> this, I think, that marks uh, um, quite the interest and the attention of, uh, of uh, the members of the European Parliament, the leaders of the political parties, uh, and uh, uh, the, the politicians in general. Because I think that they are starting to realize that uh, we actually have a problem in Europe. And we have, uh, well, not, probably not just one problem, but more than one. Uh, but one of the problems that we have concerns the way we are, uh, they are uh, actually uh, mobilizing uh, the electorate and, uh, and the way they have been to a certain extent neglecting uh, young people, at least in the past European um, elections we did a study as a European Youth Forum in order to see what went wrong because we saw that uh, uh, the, the uh, turnout of the vote of, uh, of young people was uh, extremely low and lower of the usual average that was already low because of the European elections. So that's why I'm saying there is not just one problem linked to the elections and, uh, and the European elections. So one of the things that we identified in this study was the fact that uh, uh, the campaigns that were uh, going around, especially those campaigns targeting young people, were not really engaging youth into serious uh, electoral discussions and debates about uh, what kind of policies and what kind of actions the next parliament would have taken. There were more communication exercises in order to simply say, go to vote, go to vote, go to vote, without really saying why going to vote and, uh, and without engaging the young people in this discussion. So here I go with the, with, the, with the reason why we started the, the League of the Young Voters. The, 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 the reason is exactly the need for starting to have not just a simple campaign, but a big movement in Europe that is going to engage young people, not just uh, in, uh, in letting them understand how the institutions work, which is important, which is part of the campaign, so the educational part of it, but engaging young people as... Uh, mm, be a target of the electoral campaigns of the uh, candidates and of the parties. Which means that what we are going to do in practice is, first of all, and this is the phase that we launched just a few days ago, we are going to collect the issues that young people uh, cares about and, uh, and the debates that are around those issues. So we, have, uh, we, have, we are going to collect these through an online platform that is already operational in a beta version in the next few days it will be uh, in, uh, in full speed and basically through that, that, uh, that list of issues that we will collect we are going to uh, transmit it to the political parties and we are going to see how this is going to match in the manifestos it's an, a non-partisan exercise meaning that we are not going to the political parties and saying uh, we want uh, you to tackle uh, youth unemployment uh, with this specific measure. There will be other campaigns during that, but, uh, but our, our goal is to go to the, to the socialists, is to go to the liberals, to the greens, to the EPP and, and so on, and say, listen, young people are interested to know what do you think about internships? And then we see what kind of answers do they have. And then we are going to provide in the next phases and the next steps the information for that. In all this we have also an effort of uh, multiplying this movement and also make an effort in order to, as the Why Vote uh, campaign aims for, mobilizing young people, inform them and uh, make debates, make, uh, make as much events as possible in order to, uh, to bring those issues and bring the politicians closer to the young people. So on this regard, the, the Why Vote campaign is actually the first uh, campaign that we received uh, at the European Youth Forum uh, in a call that we did in order to uh, basically grant the, um, the badge uh, to the campaign, the badge of the League of the Young Voters. And we are still in the process of doing that, but uh, I think that in the next couple of days, now that the Yofas is finished, 
and the league is launched, we will have uh, we will have time to uh, to reply uh, to that, and also trying to see a little bit more closely what kind of links there can be uh, in terms of mutual um, feeding of the two campaigns, in order for the Why Vote campaign to, uh, uh, to to enlarge this movement of the League of the Unvoters and the League itself with its platform being a, a sort of uh, uh, amplifier of all the campaign that you are doing. So uh, all this will be set uh, in, the next, uh, in the next days and, and, and weeks and we are going to see also a little bit how uh, things maybe need to some which parts are uh, exactly fitting, which are the things that we might have some uh, suggestions on. So I think that this is a work in progress at the moment. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to make an emphasis on one thing because it's something that IG Europe and the YVOT will be tackling is the lack of information and education in election processes and democratic processes. Because in the end, the overall aim is to allow young people to empower them to make informed choices in every part of their life. So this is something that uh, we will be tackling a lot. Um, back in 2009, you have here the youth agenda. The YVOT created, uh, organized several conferences around Europe, um, bringing MEPs together with young people to start a dialogue on certain topics. And um, these uh, conferences produced recommendations. So these recommendations were all put into the youth agenda, which then was sent to the newly elected MEPs. Um, apart from this, in 2009, there was also one uh, bus tour in UK because of the high levels of Euroscepticism and all the debates that were going on. So for one month, there was a group of IJ people traveling by bus all around the UK, promoting and motivating other young people to participate. But this year, for 2014, um, we wanted to be even more ambitious and even bigger. And our Royal, will, who is the communication responsible in the project of YVO, uh, he will be explaining what the new edition consists of. So Royal, the floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you, Louis. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you uh, for your kind words and your support for this uh, project. Uh, this is very good for us uh, to see that even now in the project, and now we're starting and we have everything planned, that we already have support uh, from uh, MEPs such as uh, yourself. So I'm very glad that you could be here today. Also, you said, I'm uh, very glad to see that the uh, European Youth Forum is also working on this, and I hope to see a very uh, fruitful cooperation between our two uh, campaigns. Now, uh, before I start to talk about the Y Vote project, I will uh, go talk a bit about the European Parliament elections in 2014 a bit. Most of all, about voter interest and why this is a problem and why this has been a problem for the past couple of years, um, why we, what we think the causes of this problem. And then I will move on to the YVO 2014 project. I will describe the project as a whole, as well as how we will tackle the, uh, the problem we have then defined. So, only 353 days to go until the elections. That might seem like a lot of time, but really, it isn't. Not when you're dealing with big problems uh, like we are dealing with right now in Europe, or as the European Parliament with uh, voter disinterest. Now, I can imagine that people here at this table have a lot to do in these uh, 353 days. I can imagine that uh, party programs will have to be uh, written, a lot of conferences will have to be organized to make sure that all the parties know what they're standing for uh, for the coming elections. And of course, these campaigns have to be organized. But uh, the 353 days, we have to uh, really use to turn around the trend of uh, voter disinterest. You said, uh, was already referring to this uh, with your study from the European Youth Forum uh, already, because voter interest has been declining. In 2009, overall turnout throughout Europe was down uh, to 43 percent, which is extremely low for elections. And this was even uh, worse for the age group from 18 to 24, having only 29 percent uh, voter turnout. Now, this is very dramatic, and it really uh, makes sure that. Uh, the decisions taken at the European level don't have the same uh, representation from young people, don't have the same credibility towards young people, and should therefore really be tackled. But there are many questions we can be, ask, uh, we can be asking ourselves about uh, this trend. But the most important question must be, why? Why is this all happening? Why aren't uh, young people voting? Why do they not uh, feel represented? But there are, of course, many answers to this, but the most important one, according to us, is the political disaffection of young people. This is a very big factor in why uh, young people are not voting uh, at this moment. And uh, uh, this is clearly demonstrated when you just talk to the young people. When you talk to them, they often use statements like, 
Brussels is far away. Now, this can be a, geor a geographical thing. I myself am from the Netherlands, so for me it's not uh, much of a you know, ge ge geographical <laughs> problem. But it's mostly uh, in the way that uh, how it feels. If you're represented, then it feels uh, close by. If you feel that you have a, a way to have your voice heard, then it feels closer by than it does right now. They also often say that I don't know what the parties stand for. Now, of course, the system can be quite hard to understand. It, can, it is quite complex. And this is a, ta a problem which we should all tackle. And I think that's not just a responsibility for us as a, uh, program, as a campaign, but also for members of parliament and for the parties to tackle. So what you also hear is politi politicians do not listen to young people. Now, of course, this is a very broad problem, a problem which we uh, cannot think to tackle uh, once like this. But there are significant steps we can take to make sure that the youth opinion is known and can be heard in Brussels, and we can also go to the European Parliament to say this is what the youth has said they want, so please work on it. And lastly, another statement which is often made is my vote doesn't change anything. But this is uh, a statement which is often heard from many age groups, not even uh, just among young people. But it's still very, uh, very good to know that this is a factor that uh, is still being played out. So what we must do is to make sure that young people know that their vote does count and they can make a difference and their voice can be heard. Which brings me to the Why Vote project. Now, I will first uh, introduce uh, the project uh, and, uh, entirely. We have four major points, but first the aim, because the aim of the Wide Vote project is to turn first-time voters and students into actors of the European Parliament elections in 2014 by informing them and encouraging them to participate. Now, there are uh, several actions we have planned for this. I will uh, keep it to just the uh, main four, but there are many other uh, ways where we will be trying to engage young people and encouraging them to vote. These four are local actions. We're going to produce a voting guide. We will make a youth agenda with the collective opinions. And we will have bus tours, starting them with local actions. As Louis already introduced, IJ is present throughout Europe. And my last check, I think, in uh, about 200 cities uh, in Europe in its entirety. So this gives us a real practical advantage. We can organize at local level many actions through these uh, local antennae. Now, we as a project will be preparing a manual for how to organize these activities and how to uh, set them up, how to make sure that they're successful. We will be providing them with the materials so we can really guarantee the quality of all these actions. And we will even organize trainings for people who want to organize these actions. Moving on to the voting guide. Now, the aim of the voting guide is to enable first-time voters and students to make an informed choice in the European Parliament elections in 2014. Well, this guide is separate for every country, and it will include several things, especially how the EU works. As we say, that's a problem, so we should definitely tackle that in a, an appealing way to young people. We will include the political groups and their points of view. We will also include which national parties they are from. This is very relevant because many people do not know how these connections are made, so it's very important to have this distinction. And lastly, of course, how to vote, both at home and abroad. As, of course, the European Union has been promoting uh, mobility quite a lot, so it's good to also know how to vote abroad. And with this guide, we really hope to achieve that people, uh, especially young people, can make an informed choice, because then they know what the parties stand for, uh, how to vote, why they should vote, and what the important issues are. Then we go on to the Youth Agenda. Now, the Youth Agenda is a project we are launching and within the Why Vote project, which we will organize about 10 uh, conferences or conventions where we will discuss an important uh, uh, subject which is important and relevant to youth at each conference. At this conference we will uh, be discussing it thoroughly and we will get, gather the recommendations. We will make sure that they're uh, present, like in the booklets here, actually you see that many of you have taken the booklet and can be promoted towards the European Parliament afterwards. Now, it's very important for me to stress that these uh, conferences will be organized not only by young people but for young people and will therefore really be uh, appealing to them and we hope to achieve uh, as much participation from as many different groups as possible. And lastly, the bus tours. Now, we have planned uh, many different bus tours with uh, the aim of going through uh, several countries 
and to visit the smaller uh, towns, to get in touch with the people locally, to talk to them why uh, they vote, why they don't vote, and to really engage them at this practical local level face-to-face. -face. And we have uh, selected three countries for this action. Firstly, Croatia. Croatia is, of course, the newest EU member state, and as we said in our aim, first-time voters is our uh, main goal, and since it is the first time that they are voting together with uh, the rest of Europe in the European Parliament elections, we think this is an excellent opportunity to have a big impact on this weak group. Second of all, we have bus, uh, bus tour in Spain. Spain is, of course, one of the countries which has been hardest hit by the crisis. So even now, it is important to show what uh, Europe has done, why it is important for them to vote, and to make sure that uh, they also affect uh, the course uh, of Europe for the coming five years. And lastly, a bus tour in the UK. Of course, the UK is uh, known for being relatively Eurosceptic, and at these times during the crisis, this level of Euroscepticism has been increasing. Now, we hope to achieve a lot with these bus tours, to really uh, get to the people on a very uh, practical, local level, and to really change this trend of photo disinterest. So, in 353 days, it might seem like a short time, might seem like a long time, but we have several things which we really have to achieve and aim not of, uh, just of our team but of everybody in this room should be that young people will know what is at stake at the elections that they know what the parties stand for and they know that their voice can make a difference and I definitely hope to see all of you working on this together with the project uh, throughout Europe thank you very much for your attention Okay, thanks, Royal, for the presentation. So now you are a bit more aware of what the, the kind of actions which the project will be having. And now I would like to give the floor to you. I mean, to use this opportunity maybe to ask some questions to, to Giuseppe, who uh, can tell you what's happening or more on, with the League of Young Voters, more on the high-level policy related to youth uh, or to either. You don't always have the chance to ask an MEP a question. So, um, yeah, the floor is yours. Is there anyone who wants to ask someone or... Uh, something from just Palestine. Yeah, Pali? Uh, uh, good afternoon, I'm Pali from Spain. Uh, I would like to ask you, well, we have seen uh, recently the launch of the, what to call it, like an emergency package for youth unemployment is six, six million euros, but, well, this seems to me a short-term measure, so which are the measures in the long term? Because, I mean, we will not tackle, I mean, we will tackle, but we will not diminish so much then, for example, in Spain, from 27% of 52% of young people. So which will be the measures in the long term? The measures I would like to, to have. <laughs> yes. This is not exactly matching with the measure that they are proposing or, or they are not proposing, unfortunately. As you mentioned, 6 billion is peanuts. And we have been uh, discussing on, on the youth guarantee. Youth guarantee is a good idea, but 6 billion is not enough. <coughs> uh, you perfectly know that there are a lot of studies that say that at least we need 21 billion because uh, youth unemployment is a, it's a drama and, it's <coughs> and even if you look in uh, economic figures it's, it is costing 153 billion per euro to, uh, to the European Union members so I think we, we need to put more money but it's not the solution of course the youth guarantee is a, a good tool and maybe uh, to try to to decrease a little uh, the youth unemployment but th this is not the, the real uh, uh, politics that we have to to take and seriously I think if we don't change the political and economic decisions on the European Union we will never tackle the youth unemployment problem really because we can offer the youth guarantee or now uh, as a guarantee to the EIB to help SMEs, whatever. If the economic uh, situation doesn't change, and for this, in my point of view, we have to change the political decisions, and we have to change this austerity single mind that now is on the European Commission and on the Troika and on the Council, we are not going to really face the youth unemployment problem. We can continue working on youth unemployment package and youth guarantee and so on, but we need to change the, the crisis and the economy. And this is for me clear that with this kind of uh, austerity measures, it's not possible. And we need 
of course, and especially on the on the countries on the south who are suffering the more the crisis. We need the help of the rest of the European members, not only on the budget or on the union budget. Also, you know that we are discussing on the next MFF and. The proposal from the Council is not investing more, but cutting more and more, so I don't think this is a good solution. But even the MFF and the European budget is very low, it's only 1% of the, of the uh, GNV, so I think we, we can afford a little increase and, and we cannot accept these cuts. But we have to change uh, the political uh, the economy on the Council and on the Commission. And if they don't forget these austerity measures, only austerity measures, and they don't really accept that we have to change it and we need to really invest uh, and, and to wake up the, the, the demand uh, on, the, on, the, on the 27th country, we will never face the, the youth unemployment. Okay. Giuseppe, do you want to maybe say something on this? Well, uh, Eder almost repeated everything that I wanted to say, which <laughs> means that we are doing a good lobbying at the European Parliament, <laughs> <laughs> especially when it comes to the comes to the claims about the budget that uh, that we've been uh, bringing forward. So uh, this is uh, this is a good uh, this is a good <coughs> sign, but also it's a bad sign in the sense that uh, if uh, if we see that. Uh, uh, I would say even uh, the fact that we have some committed and convinced mm -hmm. MEPs don't manage to change the things at the level of the member states and the level where the decisions or these kinds of decisions are taken, then this is uh, the part that uh, we need to work hard together and uh, <coughs> in order how we can reach it uh, uh, for, the next, uh, for the next level, which would be for the next elections, yeah. I would say. Yeah. If I, if I may, yeah, I would sure. like to add just two things, because you're absolutely right, but there are two problems. First, that even if you agree with me, not most of the people, uh, MEPs on the European Parliament agrees. So we have few MEPs, if we compare with the whole mm -hmm. Parliament, that we are defending to stop the austerity and so on. And the second thing is, even with the Lisbon Treaty, that now the European Parliament has more and more power, we don't have all the power, and especially on the economic decision, that we have very little power, if we can say. So we need to be also on the European Parliament, the lobby for the Council, and for mm -hmm. well, especially for the Council. The Commission has the right to propose, but they don't decide a lot, even if they are really lobbied by the Council, and so the Troika and the Commission recommendations are very guide recommendations, mm -hmm. if I can say. So uh, we need your lobby and, and our lobby to change the mind of the, of the rest of the MEPs. Fortunately, more and more MEPs are accepting that the decisions taken till now are not the, the good ones and we have to change it, but we need to change also the Council. And, and to change the European Parliament, and this is why I, I thought at the beginning that it's very important people go vote Otherwise, they wouldn't change anything, and this is very important. One vote is really important, mm -hmm. and can change one MEP from one side to another one, and this can uh, change the majority. So the decisions and the final uh, recommendations or, or, or the final votes. So this is really important. So we, need, we have two big problems, let's say, but I think we are on a good way. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I uh, must uh, agree that we are on a good way, but of course so much has to be done. Yeah. Uh, youth unemployment has been on the agenda for uh, quite a long time now. It's been uh, one of the top priorities. And uh, we really see it, especially within IJ, that uh, whenever we talk somewhere, youth unemployment is one of the uh, subjects that's uh, there to discuss. Now, uh, I will not, uh, of course, repeat the point of view that's already been uh, stated, but uh, to me, uh, what is important, what you just said, is that our lobby is very important because uh, as we have in front of us the youth agenda of 2009 from the White Earth Project. Uh, in what way do you think that uh, having a new agenda for the new elections uh, can help this, uh, this lobby to become stronger and to really make sure that uh, the youth is heard? Yes, of course. This is really important. Mm -hmm. And when I always meet people, I, I always say we are not heroes. Mm -hmm. We don't know everything about 
everything. So we need inputs, we need to, to, to hear uh, different uh, proposals or different uh, problems and how to face them. So for, uh, at least for me, I can only talk for me, but for me it's really important to have this kind of meetings and have this uh, youth agenda 2008. I'm sure that there are many things that are always uh, available for today So and for the next elections, but anyway, this is really important. We need to have this input. And sometimes it's not that the uh, people think that they are not listened. <coughs> we need they, them to contact us and to and to explain us what they, are the problems, what uh, do they think we have to change, or everything. We cannot decide everything on our office with my team. It's a very uh, big team and very uh, intelligent team, but we are three people. We cannot decide everything. We need the help of our for not only young people, but in this case, of course, young people, but we need to help for every European citizen, and we are really open. So sometimes I, I'm, I feel very worried when I say, no, uh, European uh, politicians are really far away and we can't contact. I know that they, they think and they feel like this, but it's not really. And I, I always ask them, send me emails, <coughs> and, uh, phone me, give me your, all your opinions and feedbacks, and I, they are really welcome. So I, I think it's. Really may add that. something on that? Well, the European <coughs> Forum. Bless you, Rita. At the European Youth Forum uh, uh, in, at our last General Assembly in, uh, in November 2012. We, we voted a manifesto already for, for the next elections. This is uh, our, the other side of the coin of, of our engagement for the elections. So one side it, there is the non-partisan uh, uh, educational uh, role of the League of the Unvoters. And on the other hand, we are a lobby organization and a lobby platform. So uh, uh, you also, as AJ, as a member of the European Youth, Youth Forum, contributed to adopt uh, such a manifesto, the Lobby Youth Future One. And uh, from this manifesto, which uh, contains the main uh, lines of what we would like to see the candidates to actually take position on with this time with, with a partisan approach, partisan not in the sense of uh, taking the side of one political party or the other, but with a, a clear demand towards the, the next, uh, the next um, parliament and, and the candidates on several issues, and uh, I think that this, uh, uh, this is something that I would like to ask to you as IJ, uh, since we are now also going to develop from this manifesto something that is much more concrete, uh, a pledge, and it's going to be the Love Youth Future Pledge that we're going to develop as Youth Forum. Uh, how, would you, um, how would you combine the, this initiative of the youth agenda with the fact that there is going to be a pledge that, uh, that we more or less uh, agreed on already? Yeah. I mean the the YMO 2014 project has a different number of topics, uh, going from education to mobility to employment to research. and So of course, being a student organization, we have certain topics on the agenda, but of course, we always try to make as many links as possible to what already exists, especially with the Euro European Youth Forum, because obviously it's a strong platform which we contribute a lot inside, so we don't want to double things, but we want to multiply things. Mm -hmm. So what we will do is to try and link as much as possible the manifesto, and but also with the League of Young Voters, and try to sum up, and not to, not to repeat, but try to ha uh, look at the different topics from a student perspective, which always can be different who may be the other kind of sectors in, in society. So yes, I mean, there's still the discussions are going on in the project, and, and I don't know if any of the project team members wants to add anything. Um, maybe I, I can add something, <coughs> because I absolutely agree that uh, we should not uh, like be going against each other, we should be cooperating. If we can uh, collect opinions, we can get this discussion going and have uh, uh, an agenda for the youth what uh, they want, which is supported uh, by uh, not just our group separately, <coughs> but uh, together, everybody who attended there. That makes our message a uh, lot stronger. So I think that uh, through that, through looking at what was really discussed at, uh, at uh, both our campaigns, um, what recommendations were drafted, we can really uh, have a lot more impact than <coughs> through, uh, separately. So um, our first conference uh, will be on uh, youth participation and will be in September in uh, Valladolid. Yeah. So uh, it's already quite soon. 
Uh, I don't know when uh, your uh, uh, like first uh, activity is about was because it was launched uh, last week. But do you have uh, something coming up soon? Or well, uh, as I said before, there are two different things that you're speaking about here. There is one from one side is the League of the Young Voters with all these activities and everything. Mm -hmm. But also we are as European Youth Forum we are doing in parallel mm -hmm. some actions that are more of our traditional lobby actions ah. that are that are based on a manifesto that we have uh, agreed on on our last General Assembly mm -hmm. and which will be resumed for communication purpose into a pledge that will be more uh, communication uh, uh, friendly even though the content part is already foreseen this manifesto which, which is called Love Good Future which comes also from a little bit of a result of another campaign that, uh, that we are running in parallel which is the Love Good Future campaign so uh, those two things goes a little bit in parallel because we, we uh, cannot mix in the League of the Young Voters also claims that are, uh, let's say, sectorial. Like we, we, the League of the Young Voters is made as a platform for discussions of different point of views and, and bringing all the different point of views together and inform young people. This part of having a well-informed choice, informed uh, voters uh, and, uh, and bring uh, this part on it. While the other campaign, the Love Youth Future one, is about the European Youth Forum as such, uh, bringing its own claims in order to uh, <coughs> raise the amount of money for the youth guarantee, uh, lower the voting age at 16, uh, uh, having a new intergroup in the parliament uh, for the next mandate. So very concrete uh, uh, demands or that uh, uh, things linked to the youth strategy or the ongoing, uh, um, ongoing lobbying uh, with the youth programs or things about mobility. You know, all these core things that we ask for as, as European Youth Forum. So it might be a little bit complicated uh, to see the difference at the beginning, but actually there are two different sides of, of the same coins. Uh, we have two kind of different responsibilities. One is uh, to try to amplify and bring as many voices as possible with the League of Young Voters. And on the other hand, uh, taking the mandate of our member organizations to lobbying the, the candidates in the parliament for, uh, for concrete demands. Okay, perfect. Uh, one question here from Eleni. One question that Eleni needs to go. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe oh, will not listen to the answer, but for me, um, you said we, we need to change. We need to change something um, about the politics and everything. So my first question would be if there is something concrete, if there are some suggestions, if, if, if there are discussions going on behind the curtains or in front, or because it's like blah, 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 <laughs> everywhere, but concrete, nothing. And the second question is, you mentioned before, we need input. So um, we need them to contact us. But for me, it's like, we need them to contact us. We are here contacting it. But how do you contact them? Not you personally, the politicians. It's like, I'm sitting here, please contact me. So it's like, I see that it's two ways. And if citizens are not contacting, then it's also from the other part that they do also nothing, most probably, not that to, to, to somehow reach these people. And unfortunately, my bus is <laughs> <laughs> very, 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 very quickly. I, I know that, but of course, for me, it's not easy to contact each of you. On the, of course, I can go on the street, like, uh, but it's not easy. So that's why I say contact me because it's easier for someone to contact me than me to contact. I don't know if they are interested in contact me or working with me or so. This is why it's not because I'm MEP and you are normal citizen. No, I'm like you, I'm a normal citizen, but I'm working here. This is uh, the only difference. That's why I'm, I'm saying contact me, because it's easier this way. Of course, I'm going back uh, all the weekends on my region, and I'm, I'm with uh, young people or, or old people in associations and so on. This way I can contact them, people who are really associated, but not individual one. So this is why I, when I always meet some groups, I say, if you need something, contact me directly. It's easy to contact me. This was the <laughs> Maybe in Spanish it would be easier to explain. Maybe in English it was to contact me. No, no, no. <laughs> it, it was not something personal. It was just my perspective that no, no, no. Yeah. it's not always one way. 
it, it's there are two parts in, in the specific uh, example, so it has to be from both parts that they are trying somehow. This was just my question. So okay. Um, we have a question from Alma here, yes? So recent uh, data that has been released is showing that around 60% of young people are planning to go and vote in uh, European Parliament elections to, uh, 2014. So what do you think actually, what has changed in these four years? Because as we saw the data that four years ago there were just 29%, almost half. So I suppose that maybe the, the one good thing of the crisis is that people have realized that Europe and European institutions exist and that they can <laughs> decide good or not. Maybe this is a, we have always to be positive, so maybe this is the only positive thing that the crisis has given us. So I think, and I suppose that not only young people, I hope that also uh, old people are, are going to vote more than the last uh, European election and the last uh, once because uh, it's really important and, uh, and we can perfectly see that in the European institution we are deciding a lot of things that not only now because of the crisis like, and economic things are really important but on agriculture and on, on environment and on industrial policy and we always say that 90% of our lives are decided here on the European institution maybe not on the European Parliament but on the other institutions so I hope that young people and the rest uh, of the citizens have realized that Europe exists <coughs> and Europe is with or can be important and, and if they don't vote someone is going to decide for them and maybe not on the way they would like to 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 be. So I, I hope those, those um, data will be confirmed and 60% I think it's a, a good one. Uh, the, the participation is uh, for me is the most important even if my party is not the most support, this is democracy, but at least if we have a big support of the European institutions, this is the first step and this is a good thing. Giuseppe, will young people vote? Can I be a little bit more provocative? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't believe, I don't believe in the statistics. Yeah, if, yeah. You've been, uh, if you've been uh, watching the results of uh, the statistics before the vote at the uh, Italian uh, national elections a uh, uh, few months ago, mm -hmm. Uh, and then you saw the results, uh, then you, you wouldn't have believed uh, that uh, these people were doing really the job that they were doing. So I would like to believe the statistics because it's positive, but uh, actually my wish is of course that we are going to reach 60% or even more, but uh, that is uh, more uh, uh, out there as a result of the campaigns that we are uh, promoting, as a result of the League of the Unvoters and all the campaigns that they are supporting uh, this movement, like the Why Vote campaign, rather than uh, the result of uh, a, a statistics that uh, probably has been commissioned by uh, someone that wanted uh, it to have this result, even though I'm very happy about, uh, about that perspective, but uh, let's wait and see. Also because then we need to measure up to the statistics that is made, so... Okay, Miguel? Yeah. yeah, my question is because before these statistics, yes, there was this fear that not many people would vote. So I, I'm sure the European Parliament is preparing a big campaign for promoting participation, or I hope that at least they consider it's an important uh, line of, of budget that they have to uh, to spend in a in a wise way. But my question is, uh, has I don't know if you know how this campaign is prepared or not, but if. If you are not, then maybe you could get interested and to see if they really have like a specific focus also for young people. Because <coughs> general uh, communication it never works. You normally have to target different groups, mm -hmm. and I fear that maybe they don't have a specific line for for young people, and then they don't find the channels to reach young people. They don't find the message in the language of young people, and then in the end, we will see again not 60 percent, but maybe a, a closer to 30 percent. I don't really know the specificity of the, of the electoral campaign. I, of course, the European Parliament is working on it. Uh, and as you know, the European Parliament, we have a specific budget to communication, not only especially for the, for the European elections or for the elections, but to try to communicate what we are working on the, on the European Parliament. But this is a good suggestion. That's why I was saying that... Mm -hmm. 
we need input, so I will keep your input and follow and try to follow closer uh, the European or the definition of the European campaign and and suggest them to focus on <coughs> especially also. I suppose, I, I hope, I suppose they are doing it. I also want to believe it, but I'm I think not there so are <laughs> <laughs> people specialize in communication and so on, so I, I suppose they know that they have to target uh, special groups and I hope they will do it with young people. Okay, yep. Yes, thank you, Louis. Uh, Bartosz Paleski, President of the European Law Students Association. I like very much the idea of why vote, and thank you very much, Sean, for your brilliant presentation. My question is, where are you thinking about involving more national institutions or agencies in the country? Because as I see that, okay, why vote might not work that good, because it's all like international, like this bus is going through countries and these conferences, which probably most likely will be international ones with participation from MEPs. Shouldn't we be involved of national, like, Oh, my guess it will be Ministry of Education of each member country that there will be some classes for the kids, like pupils in the high schools, that they will learn about the European Union because then we'll go vote, they will know for what they are voting. They're, I would say that uh, the results in the national elections and the participation not that high because people don't understand the system of parties and like how government works. So, of course, the European Union has a strange and external body, and which is even more difficult to to understand. So my question will be, did Azure people connected with why both are thinking about involving like these national institutions to have this support on the member of the lab, on member state to, to get people involved and understand the European Union and then vote for, for the members of the parliament? Thank you. Well, thank you for your question. That's a very good uh, point you're making. Uh, let me just start with uh, the structure of IJ is uh, unique in that it uh, doesn't have a national level uh, whatsoever. We have a European level and we have a local yeah. level. So this uh, makes this a bit of an obstacle. But we have looked at uh, national cooperations. I already have some. We're working together with uh, youth councils in, uh, for the bus tours, for instance. And we're looking into uh, how we can best uh, coordinate this all. Now, to the example you, uh, you have of, for example, uh, using high schools uh, or schools in general to really promote Europe and uh, what they're doing with that. There's actually a different uh, project within IJ which uh, works on, on these kind of things, not specifically for elections, but mm -hmm. to uh, get this stuff going. Uh, but the aim of the YVOTE project is uh, to increase uh, the voter turnout for the 2014 uh, elections. So uh, this group is outside of our target group, unfortunately, but of course there are projects working on this. Okay, thanks. And um, very, very quickly, the last question from Catherine, yes. because we have to leave. To, to, to Giuseppe, um, do you have already something planned for the League of Young Voters after European elections? Because I think it's very important young people stay involved in the discussion, not only vote like in May and then everything stops. Mm -hmm. And then, but what is like the follow up of the League of Young Voters? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, indeed, uh, the League of Young Voters uh, in, is starting as a pilot with the European elections, but has the ambitious to become something sustainable that goes beyond just the European elections. We are also working on uh, setting up consortium, consortiums and alliances at national level in order to, uh, to have, uh, for the specific mobilization for the, for the European elections, uh, impact on the national level, because as you say, this is fundamental for the European elections, otherwise uh, a lot of the campaigning that is going on happens at the national level. And then prospectively, uh, why not? That's why it's the League of the Voters Europe and it's not the League of the Voters of the EU. Uh, prospectively also have a uh, um, League of the Voters uh, uh, popping up uh, thanks to our national youth councils uh, in uh, those countries that are not member of the EU and that wants to use this model also for national elections. Uh, we w it was very interesting to, to, to get, for example, the, the input from uh, the Austrians who have been recently uh, running uh, national uh, uh, campaigns to try to see and explore if this uh, kind of uh, uh, model could be uh, uh, used for national elections as well. So the idea would be to have something, a movement that would grow, uh, that would uh, constantly uh, basically enlarge it, its scope from the European elections as such to all kinds of elections. Uh, now uh, a lot will, will be determined by how the, the, the 2014 uh, campaign will go in order to see how this will, uh, will be uh, scaled up. Yeah. 
Perfect. So I really want to thank uh, Roald, Gidap, and Ada for, for this, for your time. We know you're very busy. And yes, let's see. Let's all work together and let's hope that the 60% of the European Parliament elections will be achieved. Um, so thank you very much, everybody, for coming and hope to see you soon. So thanks. Thanks a lot.